This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Well, good morning, good morning, and welcome to our service of worship uh, here at Ohio UP Church on this Father's Day, um, on this Juneteenth. We are glad that you are joining with us, whether you're here uh, with us in person, whether you're gathering uh, online to be with us. We are glad that you have heard God's call on your life to gather together and worship. Um, I am excited to share my new shirt this morning uh, with all of you. Um, I hope that you grabbed a um, order of worship on your way in as well. There are new newsletters. If you didn't get one emailed and you'd like a hard copy, you can grab one of those. Uh, as a quick reminder, our kids' summer program is continuing uh, this week. It will be this uh, Wednesday evening from 6 until 7.45. Um, we'll be here in the cool. We'll be in the manse, yard, sweating. Um, it will be a wonderful time. Uh, so we invite all to join us for kids' summer program uh, going on on Wednesday as well. Um, yeah, the, the rest of sort of what's going on at the church here this summer can be found in the order of worship and in the newsletter. We are glad to be gathered here as we do so. We gather with prayer, we gather with song, we gather around God's word to be shaped and formed by the Holy Spirit. Um, and so as we gather this morning, would you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks we give thanks for the gift of today. We give thanks for the gift of um, fathers. We give thanks for the gift of um, fatherhood, which you demonstrate and teach to us. So, Lord, we pray that we would be shaped and formed um, by your character. May your Holy Spirit continue to move in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Um, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. Put your hope in God. We will praise Jesus, our Savior and God. Prayer of Adoration. O oh God, the light of the hearts that you know, life of the souls that love you, strength of the thoughts that seek you, to turn from you is to fall, to turn to you is to rise, and to abide is to stand fast forever. Although we are unworthy to approach you or ask anything of you, grant us your grace and blessing for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is number 465, and you can follow along. The words will be on the screens. Um, they, you can also follow along in the purple hymnals as well. Let us lift our voices and sing. to confession. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But when we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. Oh God, you pardon all who truly repent and turn to you. We humbly confess our sins and ask mercy to you. We have not loved you with a pure heart, nor have we loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not done justice, loved kindness, or walked humbly with you, our God. In loving greatness, have mercy on us, O oh God. In your great compassion, Cleanse us from our sins. Do not cast us away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore us to the joy of your salvation and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Personal Confession of Sin. Join us at a time of silent personal confession.
good news of God's promise. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The past is left behind. Everything has become fresh and new. Therefore, know that in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we are all forgiven and we are all being made whole. And all God's people said, Amen. Um, Shirley and Allie and I were talking about music for uh, this week and looking at our scripture. Shirley said, I remember Lynn having this wonderful song about the 12 apostles, the 12 disciples uh, that she used to sing as part of VBS. Um, and while I, I think Lynn and I discovered that it's not the exact same one, um, it is uh, pretty close um, but it is also sort of a bringing kids summer program to us because each week we will sing a song on the theme of the day. And so we, this morning, are going to uh, sing kind of a fun VBS-ish song together uh, reminding us of who the original 12 apostles were and how we are all called to be disciples of Jesus as well. So, Simon, I think if you just move the slide, it should start up automatically. And we'll see if we have song. So, Oh, yes, she 
uh, I, ha I do have to confess that the kids have just a little more energy than you all. Um, and I invite then, you may have a seat, and as you're sitting down, I invite our kiddos to come join me up front this morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Hi, Joel. Good morning, friends. Hi, Will. How is everybody this morning? There's plenty of room. You guys can kind of scoot together closer. If you guys want to sit on the pew, there's room on the pew. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Make some room, you guys. Come on. Yeah. Come on in. If we want, we can slide over here as well, and there's a fun chair here. Here. Come here, guys. Come on over here. We can put the chair here. Oop. Thanks. No, no, here. There you go. There you go. And you guys can have a seat over here. Good morning. Oh, my goodness. Are you guys still half asleep? Your foot's asleep? Uh, Piper's asleep. Well, sometimes it's hard to get up in the morning. Um, well, I'm glad to see you all this morning. Thanks for joining us. Um, we just sang a song about the 12 apostles. Uh, and another way of kind of talking about them are like Jesus' friends. And throughout our summer program, we've been talking about some of Jesus' friends. Uh, do you guys remember any of the folks that we've talked about? Oh, my goodness. <sighs> no, who have we talked about at Kids Summer Program? Come on. Peter. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Joel. Oh, one of you were paying attention. Paul and Ananias. Yeah. Uh, and, and we've been talking about some of Jesus' friends, Saul, who did become Paul. Yeah. And we've been talking about Jesus' friends and sort of what they did and how they were excited to tell others about the good news of Jesus. Um, the good news that God loved uh, everyone so much that he all wanted them to be part of his big family. He didn't care where they came from. He didn't care who their parents were. He didn't care whether or not they had two working legs or no working legs, right? <coughs> And today, in Sunday School, we're going to talk a little bit more about one of Jesus' friends and how their experience with Jesus made them just so excited that they had to tell everybody that they couldn't help themselves. Do you guys ever feel that way? That you're so excited to tell somebody something that you just can't keep your mouth shut and you need to tell them? I get excited that way sometimes. Maybe. Maybe. You guys seem to sort of be excited. Sometimes you are. Uh, well, our story today for Sunday School will be about one of Jesus' friends who was so excited to tell other people about Jesus and his experience with him that he just couldn't keep it in and he had to tell everybody. And so, I'm not going to tell you the rest of the story because that would be unfair to Sunday School teachers. But your parents now know, ooh, I wonder who this person that Pastor Nick is talking about. And you guys get to tell your parents about who that person is. So parents, you have to ask. And kiddos, you have to tell them. Sound good? Meh, you're, not, you're not giving me a whole lot of confidence here, friends. Oh, my goodness. All right, well, look alive, kiddos. Uh, let's pray, and you can head down to Sunday school. Gracious God, we do give you thanks. Um, we thank you for your friends who have told the world about you. We thank you that y you call us your friend and that you help uh, and desire us to tell others about you as well. And so we uh, thank you for this, and we pray this in Jesus' name. And we all said really loud. Amen. Amen. Oh, now you're loud. Thank you, friends. You guys can head downstairs to Sunday school this morning. You can do your reading and then go down. Yeah. And as our half-asleep children uh, go downstairs, um, would you pray with me? 
Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit and prepare our hearts to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, that hearing we may also obey your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we're beginning um, a sort of summer series on prayer and discernment. And our first text comes out of Luke's Gospel, chapter 6. Um, and Miss Marin, take it away. Luke 6, verses 12 through 16. One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spend the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated apostles. Simon, who he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. And when morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated apostles. Before Jesus acts, before he does anything, he prays. Like before Jesus makes this momentous decision to choose from many disciples who had been following him um, to find 12 that would be his uh, apostles, he prays. Before Jesus begins training the ones he will send after him, he prays. Right? Prayer precedes action. So we see in our text this morning that Jesus seeks God's wisdom before he acts. So often we act without first praying about it. I don't know about you, but sometimes I just go. And I don't give it another thought. Sometimes I just do. And I don't give it another thought. You know, sometimes I think, well, my decision is just so ordinary. I don't need to bug God with it. It's just so mundane. God's not interested in those mundane details of my life. Perhaps we don't think that we need God's input. Right? Perhaps we're so worried and anxious that we just act quickly so we don't get left behind or left out. But there's a million different reasons our actions are not preceded by prayer. Because in reality, prayer takes time. We wonder, am I doing it right? right? Prayer takes time. Jesus had been traveling around Gal Galilee and Judea, teaching in the synagogues, healing people, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God, right? If we remember the story of Jesus' life, he, he's baptized, he goes into the wilderness for 40 days, he comes out of the wilderness, and in, and in Luke's gospel, he goes into a synagogue near home, uh, and he reads from this scroll of Isaiah, and he starts teaching people in the synagogue. And then he kind of starts wandering around the area around Galilee and Nazareth where he's from. And he heads into Judea and he's teaching in synagogues and he's healing people and he's doing miracles. And people are starting to follow him and they're wondering what in the world is going on with this person. Right? Many folks had gathered around Jesus, leaving their lives to follow him. And at this point, Jesus had many, many disciples many who were willing to follow him in these good and exciting times. And yet Jesus was looking for more. He chose 12 to specifically be his apostles, our text says. And that word apostle means messenger, envoy, representative. Jesus was patient, gathering up many disciples. And before he chose these 12 apostles, he spent the night in prayer in conversation with God to make sure that they were on the same page. See, Jesus knows that God speaks. Jesus knows that prayer is an intimate, conversational relationship with God. And sometimes in our own lives, 
there are times where we know that God speaks, and there are other times where we wonder, does God really speak? I haven't heard him. How do I know it's him and just not my own brain? But Jesus knows that God speaks. And what's interesting is the next thing that happens is Jesus brings um, a motley crew of characters into this important group of people. Right? There's a wide variety of apostles. They're fishermen, right? Peter and Andrew and James and John. There's a tax collector, Matthew. There's a political revolutionary, Simon the Zealot. There's a skeptical man who later wanted clear proof of Jesus' resurrection to put his fingers into the holes in Jesus' hands and his hand into his side, Thomas. There's a man whose name has been completely lost to history, Bartholomew, because Bartholomew is a Greek translation of the Hebrew that literally means son of Ptolemy. We don't even know who he is. He's just Ptolemy's son. There's even a future traitor, Judas Iscariot. And within this microcosm, we see God calling all to him. He's not calling those who have it all figured out and who are perfect. He's calling imperfect and sinful people to be part of his family, to be specifically set aside to be God's special messengers. He's calling anti-government revolutionaries and government tax collectors to hang out together. You ever thought about that? And you think, like, putting Democrats and Republicans together is a, you know, combustible situation? There's nothing. Right? He's calling simple fishermen and those who are more learned. He's calling those whom history has forgotten. You think of all the people that history shouldn't forget, it wouldn't be one of Jesus' 12 apostles. And yet an ordinary person that no one even remembers is a part of the 12. He's calling all of these people with their various, various preferences and history and families and experience and trauma, and they're all being called together for God for his mission. And they're not called together to remain the same. They're called to God to be transformed by God, to live out God's mission. They're not called together into like-minded interest groups because otherwise you'd have like a whole bunch of tax collectors following Jesus or you'd have a whole bunch of zealots following Jesus. You'd have a whole bunch of sons of whomever, right? They're gathered into this new family. They're formed in a way which puts their own interests and tastes and preferences aside in order to have God's interests first. And paradoxically, it's in sacrificing themselves that they truly become themselves. They become whom God has created them to be. And the difficult and crazy thing is it's not a foregone conclusion that all of these people would use their freedom to choose God in God's way. It's not a foregone conclusion that God has chosen these people and they're going to do the right thing or they're going to do it the, the right way or that they're going to p- precede all of their action with prayer. Right? Judas didn't have to become a traitor. He chose it. He chose some other way than God's way. And in doing so, he became the traitor. But notice, it wasn't Judas the lost It wasn't Judas the forsaken. He wasn't lost. He wasn't forsaken. He could have confessed his sin. Rather, Judas chose to remove himself from the presence of God. All of the apostles could have that as their last name. All of the apostles could be called traitors as they all had abandoned Jesus and lied about knowing him. Right? Yet the eleven confessed and returned. They did not allow their shame to drive them completely away. Right? One of the difficulties about prayer is that it is a messy thing. And it's not a get-out-of-jail-free card. Praying before acting doesn't mean that the going is going to be easy or that there will not be difficulties or that things will be clear all the time. Right? Just ask Jesus as he prayed in Gethsemane before being crucified. His prayer was, God, if there's any other way, right? 
our human action will always be messy because we all still have free will. We all still have a proclivity to sin. We all make mistakes and act out of self-interest or self-protection. But if we do not begin with prayer, then all hope will truly be lost. Because we will think that we can do it alone. And those who go it alone go without God. And to go without God is to choose death. Right? Prayer is difficult. There are a lot of what ifs. Right? What if I didn't hear from God correctly? What if God doesn't say anything? What if I don't like what God says? What if I don't want to pray and I just want to do it myself? Right? What if I'm numb and I don't know what to say? Right? Prayer is not an easy thing. But it is the thing that connects us to God. And it's not always easy to start with prayer. I wrestle with this myself. It's difficult to be, um, to wait on God. I, I have uh, had an interesting um, 24 hours um, some of my family members have betrayed each other's trust and lied about and hurt someone very close to me. And it's not anything between Courtney and I, um, but I'm deeply hurt and deeply frustrated, and I want to act out of my frustration and hurt. And I know I'm not the only one that's ever experienced something along these lines. But when we are hurt when we are frustrated and when we want to act out of that hurt and frustration, we don't think about praying first. Right? Rather, we think of the decisions that others have made that have deeply wounded us. We think about their decisions not to deal with what they've done. And in not dealing with those things head on, they make them worse. Right? And so the reality is... Um, you know, I can't stand up here and have a happy face, even though that's sort of what we're taught, especially as Christians sometimes, that when stuff hits the fan, you just keep a happy face about it and go along. Right? The wind gets knocked out of our sails, and whatever energy we've had pretty much evaporates. And when we're at a loss and we don't know what to do, we pray. We pray because we know that God is a God who comes alongside and ministers. He's the God who came alongside Israel and brought them out of slavery when they called to him. He's the God who comes alongside and is with Jesus as he is on the cross. He's the God that comes to each and every one of us. And if we all talked about those stories in our own lives, we would all have those experiences. And we would all be able to look back and say at those times where God was with us. God does minister to us. And so in the midst of that, I pray to the God who ministers, knowing that he will answer and minister to me. And my prayer for all of us is that in the good and the bad, that we will be a people who pray who pray before we act and before we move and before we do. And so I pray to the God who ministers, knowing he will answer and minister to me. And in the meantime, I will await God's answer. Amen. Well, as we gather each and every week, we gather around God's word, which is his character. We gather to be reminded of our faith, of the good news that we proclaim. And so if you are able, I invite you to stand this morning as we remind ourselves of the faith that we stand in. Um, our affirmation this morning is taken from a bunch of different places in Scripture. Um, and it reminds us, again, of the God who comes alongside and ministers. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved, if we hold it fast 
that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, and that he appeared first to the women, then to Peter, and to the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Lord and God. And if you're able to remain standing, please do so as we uh, sing hymn number 651. Um, it's a new hymn, I think, right, Shirley? Um, but it's, Shirley will play it through to get the tune. It's a, a simple tune, uh, but it's based on Psalm 40. Um, hit it, Shirley. may be seated. And as we gather each and every week, we gather as a people um, in prayer, in conversation with God. And so let us lift our hearts and our minds and our souls to God in prayer this morning. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray. Guide us by your Holy Spirit that our prayers may serve your will and show your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us pray for the world, and in this silence, Lord, let us lift up our prayers for this world that we live in. God, our creator, we pray for the world that you have made. Overthrow evil powers. Right what is wrong. Feed and satisfy those who thirst for justice. 
so that all your children may freely enjoy your creation and joyfully sing your praises. O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, in this quiet moment, hear our prayers for the church. Gracious God, you have called us to be the church of Jesus Christ. Keep us one in faith and service, breaking bread together, proclaiming the good news to the world, that all may believe you are love and turn to your ways. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, in this quiet moment, hear us as we pray for peace. eternal God, you sent Jesus Christ to break down the walls of hostility that divide us. Send peace on earth. Put down greed, pride, and anger, which turn nation against nation and race against race. Speed the day when wars will end and the whole world accepts your rule. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, in this quiet moment, hear us as we pray for our enemies. O oh God, whom we cannot love unless we love our neighbors, remove hate and prejudice from us and from all people so that all your children may be reconciled with those we fear, resent, or threaten and live together in your peace. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. And in this quiet moment, Lord, let us pray for those who govern us, Mighty God, sovereign over the nations, direct those who make, administer, and judge our laws. The president, our senators and representatives, and others in authority among us, that guided by your wisdom, they may lead us in the way of righteousness. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. And in this quiet moment, let us pray for world leaders. eternal ruler, hope of all the earth, give vision to those who serve our world, those who govern all countries, that with goodwill and justice they may take down barriers, foster understanding, and draw the world together in peace. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. And in this moment, let us pray for those who are sick. And merciful God, you bear the pain of the world. Look with compassion on those who are sick. 
cheer them by your word and bring healing as a sign of your grace. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. And in this silent moment, let us pray for those who sorrow. God of comfort, stand with those who sorrow. Give them assurance that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall separate them from your love. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. And in this quiet moment, let us pray for friends and family. God of compassion, bless us and those we love, our friends and families, that drawing close to you, we may be drawn closer to each other. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. And God of all generations, we praise you for all your servants who, having been faithful to you on earth, now live with you in heaven. Keep us in fellowship with them and with each other until we meet with all of your children in the joy of your eternal kingdom. We pray for all fathers, for all who have desired to be fathers but were not. Bless them with your strength, compassion, and tenderness that they may lead their families well, taking you as their guide and mentor. We pray for our African-American brothers and sisters who celebrate their final release from slavery on this day. Yet we pray for them and their allies in their continued fight against racism. Mighty God, whose word we trust, and whose spirit enables us to pray, and whose spirit um, gives us words and translates our groanings, into that which you can understand. Help us to pray. Accept our requests. Further those which will bring about your purpose for the earth. We pray all of this through Jesus Christ, who rules over all things and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> as we gather together this morning and as we pass these plates, and as the ushers come down, a reminder that these plates aren't simply a place to put money, um, but they are an opportunity for us to offer our lives, right, our time, our talents, and our money, knowing that all that we have has been given to us by God, that all that we have is a gift, that it is not ours to grasp onto and hold onto, but it has uh, been given to us in order to be a blessing. And so, Lord, we pray that um, in this opportunity that we would live out your character, that we would joyfully and abundantly give, and that we would know and trust that you will provide and give us all that we need.
gracious God, we give you thanks for these gifts, for the lives that they represent. We pray that you would multiply them, that we um, would be able to be your faithful people and your faithful body. Uh, we ask that you would um, bless these uh, offerings in their lives, that they would bring you glory, uh, and that we would be like your apostles, gathered together into your big family, um, all to your glory. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. Well, as we prepare to go, um, go with this charge. May God bless you with discomfort, with easy answers, with half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that you will live deeply and from the heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and the exploitation of people, so that you will work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who mourn, so you will reach out your hand to them and turn mourning into joy. And may God bless you with just enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you will do those things that others say cannot be done. And as we go, go with this blessing. The grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and keep you this day and always. And all of God's people said, amen. Let's go with singing and passing the peace. Mm -hmm.